TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, if we happen to go live and you miss it, this is where the highlights and things of that nature will be. Also, we got the uh, up the Patreon. We post there five days a week, um, uh, Monday through Friday, no weekends. That's where we watch stuff we can't watch on YouTube. If you go just check out the page, man, you can see what's on there in the description and things of that nature. Don't forget, we also got the merch. You know, there is a fully operational website where you can cop some things if you'd like. Um, if not, that's cool, man. It is what it is. <laughs> and uh, the link to all of that stuff is down in the description below. It's in a link tree. Just click it and everything will pop up. This is hotel custody. I enjoyed this more than I thought I would. Uh, but this is season one, episode two, Full Moon. They got W titles. Let's get into it. Fairly nice outside for Grimsby today. Not quite such a strong smell of fish. So, Sarah, yes. you're half Spanish. Nice beaches, Spanish senoritas, fabulous food. So, what made you choose Grimsby over Spain then? Oh, I mean, I've still got a beach near, haven't I? Yeah. Well, there you go. It's got pound shops, it's got a burger van. <laughs> Obviously, the weather. Yeah, yeah. I'm going through the menopause, so the weather here actually suits me. Because every now and again, I get steam coming out the top of my head. <laughs> Need help down there. Number two. Oh, oh, here we go. For those arrested and placed under lock and key. What's your surname, please? Dork. You gonna give me your real details? Yeah. Donald. Birch and Way custody facility in Grimsby is like no other. We've moved along with the times, you know, we've left the old dungeons behind. This state-of-the-art, £40 million facility is the first person detained. It's a bit like one of you. It may be a challenge, heroes. Please. To pay for treat them. What's their name? What would you... What be my man? Fairly long intro. Has anybody been locked up out here in the comments? Let me know. How was your experience? Was it peachy like this? Do you guys want one? We're having a brew. Yeah. Well, we only have Yorkshire tea on this shift. So I'm not from Yorkshire. I have no affiliation to Yorkshire. Yorkshire, I'm actually from Lancashire. However, the one thing I will give the Yorkies is their tea is the best. Thank you. Right, are we all ready? Are we all here? Yeah. Custody Team 3's shift starts with a rundown of those already locked up. 31 is in for two times GBH, common assault, threats to kill, described as being compliant but grumpy. 16 is in for ABH, he's been interviewed, he was rather aggressive and uncooperative on arrival under the influence of something. Anyone arrested can be detained for Definitely 24 class A. hours while the police investigate their alleged crimes. Number 20. Juvenile male, uh, he came in with a bit of a chip in his shoulder, apparently, but he's since changed his mind and actually admitted what he's done. The 36 cells are spacious with en-suites, mod cons, and a buzzer to reception. I would never call a custody suite the Ritz. However, I would like to think it's one of the more comfortable suites that we've got in the, in the country. 29 is a name I really can't pronounce. Violent and aggressive, uh, and described as being upset with life. That's it for my side. <laughs> So you've got all the problems tonight. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Hello there. Come on. Leave me alone. Number 33, please. Leave me alone. Please tell them I have not tried to shoot somebody. The Saturday night shift is always the busiest of the week. I'm the custody sergeant. OK, I'll be looking after you whilst you're in, making sure your detention's lawful. You do notice a difference on a Friday and Saturday night. It does tend to be... Uh, a of lot course. Busier. At this stage, you've not been charged with anything, you've not been convicted of anything. Do you know what we need then? This big friendly challenge, Joe. Right. Payday, people intent on spending all their wages in one go and will have too much to drink and start fighting. Um, to be fair, that can be every night of the week in Grimsby. These are officers are going to be probably searching your house. Night of the week in Grimsby. These are Is this her real hair color? 
I've never seen a red so luscious before in my life. Like, this is A1. Like, this is, like, this, hey. Officers are going to be probably searching your house. Uh, like, talking to police might, you basically destroyed my life now. But this Saturday night has an added complication. What's that? I'm in for some trouble. It's full moon tonight. Full moon normally means full custody suite. Full of. Angry people. People full of themselves. <laughs> Even the staff go crazy in a full moon. No idea why. Looks like he needs to howl. <laughs> right, I'll get this one booked in then. On an already busy shift, it isn't long before the team's full moon theory starts to ring true. Emergency. Please quick, get you quick. This is massive time. Are you involved? Yeah, I'm involved. You threw a glass at me. It's time. Got beat up and called the police. And YouTube, that is exactly what you're supposed to do. You know, as a law abiding citizen, when someone assaults you, call the police. That's not what I would do, but I'm not glorifying it either. Once I've been assaulted, Whilst I've tried to walk away and turn the other cheek. Three to suspects, group of three males. They've had a, they've had a mass brawl in the pub. You got six uh, officers on scene now. Oh God! Hey up, lads! You're all right. Oh, what's happened to you? Oh, no, got bored. Just out of. You just give it. Hey, he got up out of there. Turned because you're part of a group that's been identified as causing some issues in a pub. But hey, come here. What are you asking me? At this moment in time, yeah. Oh. Stay there. No, no, no. Stay no. there. I'm... What are you running for, daft lad? Because, because I don't want to lock it up. Wait, he's coming in for a fright. They're going to have to come in for a fright. Get your hand out now! Three men have been arrested for unlawful violence, known in police terms as a fray. A fray? Got one ready to come in. I'll go out the fray corridor. If he's really bad, we'll just take him straight to his cell. Where the rest of his pants at? Corridor. If he's. I seen shoe, sock, pants. There should not be socks being seen. Really bad. We'll just take him straight to his cell. Shoe, sock, pants. Yeah. Well, I look like I was causing a fray. Okay. Just in relation to the offence of a fray. Two seconds, two no, no, seconds. no. Silence for one minute and then... He don't need to ever get into another fight. That's fighting is not for you. You, sir, need to call the police. As soon as somebody start getting aggressive with you, just pick up your phone. 999. Because you are not a fighter. And you can have your say. Oh, look at Sergeant having a go. There's obviously been... Right. Two seconds. Wait, have I been charged? Have I been charged? Oh, my God. Get me some earplugs, will you? <laughs> now. You don't make the demands in here, mate. Just stop over speaking over me. Sometimes do draw on my military background. I'm a big fan of discipline. Unfortunately, not all the detainees go along with that. Did you feel right. fed? OK. There's Two seconds. I want to wait. Sometimes it, the old military sergeant has to come out. Silence for one minute, and then you can have your say. Bring right. it round to desk two, please. It isn't yet clear who started the fight. That boy, it's clear who finished it. That boy walking around with a, you know what I'm saying? Whilst the first two men are booked in, a third is having to wait his turn in the van. So excessive male has been identified as being part of a group involved in a fight. You've been, you've been here before? Mm, usually for some I Right. So they're not. OK. <laughs> What's your surname, please? Doc. You gonna give me your real details? The first one, Donald. Are you gonna give me your real details or not? Of course I'm not. I'm right. locked up for the night. You are gonna get locked up for the night, yeah? Let me see you, Joe. Let me see you, Joe. Off, give me this sound. Okay. I don't know why he's so aggressive. We already know you can't fight, so all that woofing and hollering is pointless. You are not him. <laughs> We've just had a detainee brought in. He's got quite a nasty egg on his face where he's been punched in the face. And he's going to be going to hospital. But detainee Tony is too aggressive for hospital, so he's taken to his cell to cool down. 
circumstances find out what it is that you've been arrested for. Vicky processes the second man. The offence, please. Common assault. Huh? I had a really good. For something I am done. To record what I'm doing. Ah, that's assault now on an officer. Spitting. Just threatening to spit. Stay down to 20, please. Oh, there we go. People do all sorts in custody. We see people harming themselves. We see people being violent. We see. Once you're under arrest and in the station, you've lost the battle. Just go peacefully. People coming in, pleasuring themselves. Excuse me? I hope I've seen it all, because I really don't want to see anything else. You don't spit at people. It's disgusting. You've had one chance. Oh, you don't I get any more. Let's get him searched. You're fat! You're off that shit down there. Tony in cell 12 is also causing problems. They need help down there. Calm down. Get the f off. Get the f off now. I have a move. I have a move. Tony, just chill out. You're going to. You're not fat! You're not fat! You're absolutely Level three until he calms down. And then we'll um, be going to hospital. What happened to Tony Pants? A good old show, isn't it? Wonderful. <laughs> With two men locked up, Vicky can now book in the third. What's the time of rest, please? Time of rest. He looks like Tony the guy hit by Iron Man or something. 311. Albion Street, Grimsby. They keep coming in, don't they? What do you think? Yes or no? Is this one going to go? We'll give him five minutes and he'll go. Mm. When people come into custody, we have been known every so often to uh, have our own little bets as to whether they're going to kick off or not. Sarah's really, really switched on, really switched on, and she predicts things well before it even happens. Let's have a bet. How much do you want to bet? If you go. It's something about Sue's necklace. Y'all know I call those black belts. It's bothering me. She's too grown for that. You buy. If you don't go, I buy. Deal. Do you consider yourself to be white and British? White and good and brown. Don't be looking at him, cos you'll make him... I'll win, then I'll win the bet, won't no, I? I don't want him kicking off. The best thing you can do, mate. Ah! Oh, it's going... Is he going to kick you off? I don't want to be in pain, but we'll, we'll, I'm not allowed a lasagna and a cup of tea. I don't think we've got any lasagna. We've got pasta bolognese. Don't do that. Oh, Sue, did I, did I just win that bet? <laughs> We don't need to discuss it any further. <laughs> <laughs> I lost the bet. She thought it was going to be three out of three. And it won't. <laughs> what shall I have tomorrow night? It's on Sue. The way he walked in quietly leads me to believe that he won the fight. That he did that to Tony. It's very easy to influence what you want Sue to say. Just a bit of a play on words. Oh, I think that person's definitely going to kick off soon. Do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I picked the software engineering program because they pay very well. It's a... F yeah, something known as lip. Dan, don't bring Tracy up. She's going. The first few hours of this full moon shift have been busier than Vicky would like. On the offence. Wasting police time. The offence wasting police time? Like, what, what was that? A long 12 hours. What does that mean? That mean they just funnel. Hold them, then let them go, because that's not a charge, is it? <clears throat> now, stopping justice or calling the police without a probable cause or something like that, but wasting your time. You're not doing nothing your whole shift anyway, probably. I was ahead of you, and if you're already starting off in a dull mood, it can make for a really long shift. So Vicky takes matters into her own hands. Pizza. <laughs> Pizza is for dinner. Breakfast, lunch and dinner, I'll have you know. Bit of dirty food. Yeah. Keep the spirits up, you know. Yeah, right. The first one is a Mediterranean platter with chip spice, please. Food is very important. A hungry troop is always going to be an unhappy troop. Uh, the next one is a cheesy chip wrap. <laughs> yeah, like a kid meal, isn't it? <laughs> we always try and get ordered at the beginning of the shift just so that we've got a better chance of actually getting it ordered. Could I have the hot waves, please? 
36. Spicy pizza. Pizza is usually the favourite order because it's one of the better ones to eat cold. Cheers. Bye. Bye. True. God, that was hard work. And if a pizza still tastes good cold or better than it did hot, then that's good pizza. Detainees taken into custody are placed in cells in one of Birch and Way's three colour-coded wings. Psychologists have looked at it and said, these are the colours that will uh, help keep people calm. Green, teal and orange. Really? Maybe I'm going to start decorating, like, you know what I'm saying, my next place. Paint my room, maybe green, t maybe teal. I don't know, none of them. Maybe the roof, the ceiling. Well, for me, it's green, blue, and orange, but uh, I'm old school. Blue. It's apparently helps make the building feel a lot calmer. But not sure some of the detainees that get brought in on a Saturday night are uh, actually bothered about the color scheme. Residing on Green Wing is Tony. One of the three men brought in for fighting outside the inside the seal. The detainee number 12 that we had to do a cell exit on was extremely violent when brought in, but he's got quite a nasty facial injury. So the medic clearly says that there's going to be some underlying damage. And it, to be fair, that's one of the biggest shiners I've ever seen in 16 years of being a police officer. So we're going to send him up to hospital. Officers need to handcuff Tony before he can be transported. Tony, no, you won't. Look at your eye. When you speak about fighting, no one believes you. We all know it's lies. You got a shiner. Bigger than an apple pie. Somebody hit you with the left and the right and dotted roll right ah my bad. The bars a little yeah. Yeah. Taking him to hospital like this. There's no point taking him to hospital like this. Leave him in here. Tony, step back. No, two seconds. Two seconds. Step back. Step back. Hey, solar companies, come here. I hate her wig. But anyway, let's continue. Somebody let her step on the set like that? It's tough. One of the three men arrested for fighting has turned on Jason and his team. The level three is going to have to stay on, guys. We're not taking to hospital like that. I've just had to push him over in the cell because he was trying to get out and put his arms out and uh, making demands, and he's aggressive. And I don't know if he's going to swing his arms or flail or hit an officer in the face. The general rule is we use as little force as, as we possibly can, but ultimately we would only ever do it if we absolutely have to, um, to minimise any risk that that person might be posing to themselves or us. You know, we've seen it where detainees have become violent. On one occasion, a custody sergeant uh, lost his life as a result of uh, one of the detainees' actions. So, yeah, it can be dangerous. What's he up to? Hang on. Has he just took something out of the back? I think we covered that case. Has he's took something out of the back of his trousers? Also causing concern is the occupant of cell 20, one of the other men involved in the fight. Watch, watch, and he's putting it up to his face. I think that one that you've just sent down is going to have to be strip searched. He looks like he in there doing class A's. Like he gets something oh, out of his yeah. pocket. And then he does literally turn on his side, both hands near his mouth, and then puts his hand back to his back pocket. Even though all detainees are searched on arrival, attempts at smuggling in weapons, phones, and drugs are common. Successful, not attempt. He was successful. Keep him on camera. I am, I'm watching him. 
when you're searching detainees that have just arrived, you've always got to make sure that search is thorough, it's done properly, because if it's not, you can miss things and they can harm themselves, they can harm staff. You've just got to be so careful. Found the battery, mate. What's he got on it? What's the matter with him? You've been seeing on the camera that Bill was another bad Eugene, and I put your hands to your mouth. Oh, don't point it out, 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 don't point it out. He definitely just did some booger sugar. Overly aggressive. I've done four corners. This is what lines are going. I think he's just playing up to the cameras. I don't think so. We'll see. I don't. Put some on it, Sue. Officers are instructed to perform a strip search to be sure. Spin around. Got it off. Anything, guys? He said that uh, he did it on purpose to wind us up. Yeah, I, said, I did you say that. You said that, didn't you, Sarah? I did say he was probably playing yeah. up to the camera, but we had to be on the shore side. The mischievous suspect in cell 20 is one of the custody suite's familiar faces. Why would he do that? Have you ever been here before? Yeah, of course. Right. Detainees that come back again and again. I would say 95% of the people who come through here are repeat visitors. Long time no see. Bunch of dead coppers. When you start seeing the same people over and over again, you kind of think, oh, here we go again. Sausage factory's in full production. You come back. What do you mean by that? Lots of visitors, aren't you? Again. Yeah. Two days ago, three days ago, you were last here? Sunday. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> you're here longer at home, mate. That's our shouldn't we? You build up a rapport with people in custody, of course you do. I've got a cell with your name on it. <laughs> I've got your book with the chapter still open. You've got a dead body in and if you build up a rapport with them, they don't cause you any problems. Peter Blanking, get your tucked up. We've got a couple back here, man. Oh, go on then. Uh, 29, please. 29. 29. <laughs> See, that's how I'm coming in. Calm. If, if, God forbid. But if, I'm in Just there calm so I can get all the little, you know what I'm saying? Blankets. So I can get all the hospitality I can. And we... Occasionally, the teams get a new face on the block. Vicky is about to meet Craig. Morning. Morning. You've been here before? I've never been. I've never been this side anywhere. No, before. never been arrested at all, <laughs> ever. OK. Craig's confusion and the circumstances even extends to why he's been arrested in the first place. The circumstances are um, males being seen by a witness smashing the window of the takeaway on Digby Street mm -hmm. and take an item from within mm -hmm. before leaving the scene heavily bleeding. It's bleeding. Craig was arrested in his hotel after police followed a trail of blood from the scene. If I was a betting woman, uh, what would I say has happened? Let me think. Too much alcohol. Way too much alcohol. Have you had any alcohol in the last 24 hours? Yeah. Yeah? Roughly how much? I don't, I don't, I don't honestly don't know. Doesn't seem like he's had a lot of alcohol, but he smells like a brewery. And how are you feeling? It's a big dude. Feeling at the minute? A bit embarrassed and shocked, if I'm honest. It's one of them things that could happen to anybody. I could do it. I have way too much to drink and wake up in here. My God, can you imagine waking up in here? Oh, my God. Whilst the police collect evidence to jog Craig's memory, All right. he'll spend the night locked up. I never been never been in trouble with the police whatsoever. Imagine doing all of that, beginning drunk, accidentally in your drunkenness, smashing a window, taking something out or allegedly taking something out, making it all the way to your hotel, in your room. <laughs> Hey, get a doc, and it's the police. I'm quite embarrassed because uh, I used to work in prisons as a prison guard. But oh, I've had too much to drink, and I've done something I shouldn't have. If you've done something wrong, you've just got to, you've just got to sort it out and deal with it. Fool, finally here. I was wondering. <laughs> Whilst Vicky's team gets stuck in. Mm. Hers will have to go cold, as tonight's full moon appears to be bringing in a constant stream of new arrivals. Uh, I've got one down there, I've got three down there. 
been a, a very busy night. Not the way we like it. When I saw the full moon early, I just thought, do you know what, that doesn't bode well at all for work tonight. The full moon myth is not a myth. Statistically, uh, we have busier shifts in here when the, there is a full moon. Psychologists have said that um, full moon causes people to go a little bit crazy and a little bit wild, and, and I could probably uh, vouch for that. I've still got one more uh, new arrival to book in. With no desk or officers available, a new arrival arrested for assault and criminal damage must wait in the police van. Yeah, I'm 18. But the young man isn't responding isn't that to officers. Somebody, somebody unconscious in the backyard. Fuck's sake. Oh, the dolly in. Call the ambulance. Oh, fella. Come on, matey. As the sergeant in charge, it's down to Vicky to establish what's happened. Ambulance. Do you know who he is? He's not responding. Ring 999. Four out of five Americans shopping on the Obama. Ambulance. This patient um, is in our custody. He's become unconscious. On a busy full moon night shift, I think he swallowed at the custody class lies unresponsive. At the age of him, uh, he's early 20s, I believe. We've got the custody medic with him now. Um, with minimal equipment. Look at that. It is quite concerning. We've got uh, a person who's been arrested and brought into custody. We've not even got, had a chance to book him into custody yet because of the queues that we've had in the backyard. And at the minute, we've got the healthcare professional with him assessing him. Just trying to find sort of what level of unconscious he is. Uh, and hopefully, an ambulance can route. Right, can somebody grab um, the med bag? I'll go get your bag. I need to be straight back out again. A significant medical emergency it's, it is a really, really worrying time. Because people do die in custody. Straight back out, please, Gary. Why didn't they bring it's that out the first time? The main worry of all custody sergeants up and down the country. Pete, will you nip back in and just look for one, Gary? We're not going to be having any more coming in until he's cleared, just in case something goes wrong. The man is breathing, but still unresponsive. I have never passed out. Officers believe he has knocked himself unconscious by banging his head on the inside of the van. I'm not able to get him to respond to anything at the minute. I mean, I'm, I'm getting absolutely now out of here. We're not going to be having any more new arrivals, because I don't want to block the ambulance in and stop them from getting the way. Um, second, if anything were to go drastically wrong and prove to be fatal, we've obviously got a, a, a scene and a, and a massive job on our hands here. We've also got quite a number of detainees already in custody uh, and some more waiting to get booked in and it's managing those risks. Can you hear me? The injured man has been unconscious for almost 15 minutes. Can you hear me? Hit him with the, you know what I'm saying, the, the salt pack? Or whatever under his nose, or throw some water on him. Hello. Maybe not water, the salt pack, though. Open your eyes, mate. He's starting to come round. Do you have any pain? Three. three uh, right. Your head. Whereabouts? All over. All over. It is a relief when you know that someone's going to be all right. You've got to try and keep the emotion out of it as best you can. It's hard to do that completely. We're human beings at the end of the day. Well, we'll get that sorted. All right, don't worry about that. Your help's more important than you trust me, isn't it? It's not. One, two, three. Oh, we go. That's it. Tracksuit is it's pretty dirty anyway. The man will go to hospital for a full checkup, but he's still under arrest. 
Can we have a couple will go with him in the ambulance, please? If he gets the all clear, he will return to custody. Uh, quite often you find that they're actually feigning uh, un being unconscious, but when they are genuinely unconscious, and, but, you know, with, with, like he's got a head injury, you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, and I suppose you always plan for the worst and hope for the best. Is he all right? Yeah. He's coming round. Nick's cut his sleeve to get to his hand, and he's come round and gone, what have you done to my jumper? Ah. Not bothered about anything at all. Is he going to hospital? Yeah, yeah. Oh, make the cup of tea, guys. Oh, yeah! Oh, best idea of it, all oh. We haven't had the chance for a... That cup of tea hit different. Mm. Cup of tea and it's... Hello. One of them things, innit? You go from chaos, chill down for two minutes, make a cup of tea. What you got to do, innit? Back to normal. Until the chaos starts again. Tea's very important in this place. Keeps everybody happy. Nice cup of tea. Mind you saying that actually a nice pint of lager would be a lot more go down a lot better. Which is working. Yes, thank you. Team three's night shift is almost over. Oh no. But there is still one detainee to process. Tony. Tony. After Tony. investigation, officers have established that it was Tony that started the fight in the pub. Duh. Another man intervened and gave him his black eye. Tony started it but could not finish that thing. Obviously, you've got quite a bad injury, mate. Are you happy to go to hospital? Right, now it was necessary. No, it was necessary before, but unfortunately, right. you were violent. L listen, that. I've been doing this a while, mate. I know what I'm doing. After being in his cell all night, Tony is still angry but no longer violent. I get filled in if you're doing me for a fright. I miss my job, I miss my kids, everything. Because you lot waste my time. One of these no, 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 no. Let me tell you why you missed all of that. <laughs> it's because you went to the pub and started a fight. And then tried to do the dash, but your equilibrium was thrown off because of that eye so black. Don't so that, that, that ain't it. Don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. Scorn. Oh, it really doesn't bother me. They're not shouting at me, they're shouting at their situation, their personal circumstances, their life in general a lot of the time. So it's water off a duck's back. No quilt all night, no nothing. Bright light, normally dark. I offered to turn his light off. I offered him a pillow, blanket, and he turned it down. Yes. I was nearly, nearly gonna bite back. I was almost tempted to say, thank you. I was going to say thanks for coming, and I thought, no, better not. I was jumping at the bit. I was like this. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> so all employees talk about disgruntled, disgruntled, um, disgruntled people when they leave. Disgruntled customers when they leave. After working four shifts in a row, the team has four days off before the next shift begins. Four days? Chance. Four days off, four days off sounds like an amazing job. I'm not even gonna lie. What? Dream. He's not very happy. Oh, where's he coming from? This morning, Sue and Sarah are back on duty. Where's my pen gone? Yeah. You put a ten pound note down, it'd stay there forever. Pens? <laughs> but on this shift, there's a different sergeant in charge. Ooh. Sergeant Stewart over at Birchin Way. How are you, mate? I am the sergeant that just keeps giving you know that, don't you? <laughs> All right, mate. Just to let you know, there's a couple of things brewing over here. Stewart has done more time in the custody suite than anyone else. I was asked to come into custody um, to cover a, re a retirement. Uh, oh. I was told I'd be here for a month. Uh, and nine years later, I'm still here. Oh, there's three of them, OK. It's my life. It's what I've come to like. It's what I've come to love. So, in number one is a name that I'm sure you're all aware of. Who? The morning briefing on cell detainees is an essential part of Sergeant Stewart's job. Apparently, the early hours of this morning, they decided to beat somebody up in the, one of the high streets in Scunthorpe. We need to keep number one and number 20 away from number 34, because number one and number 20 were kicking the crap out of number 34. 
Originally, I'm from the North East. I had no intentions of ever moving to Grimsby, but I met my wife and the decision was we'd come here so that we had some babysitters for the children. <laughs> the 11 hands himself in at the police station and when they search him in his bag, he's got Class A, a knife, whatever else you want to think of in his bag. Firearm as well. Yeah, so he's got, he's not, you know, I, I don't know, he, he doesn't strike me as the, the cleverest lad in the box. <laughs> in 32, he's Smith. I always come in in a happy mood. I've got nothing to be unhappy about. I enjoy what I do and supporting the local community. Right, onwards and upwards. I'm not gonna lie, he looked like the sergeant that nobody wanna work with. <laughs> He's just coming off as that one, like, dang, we gotta work with him today? Ah. Let me get mentally prepared. He could be cool, I could be wrong, but. As well as Grimsby, Birch and Way serves the regions of East Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire, an area of almost 1,400 square miles. What's your emergency? Hey, I think we're getting beat up by a bike head. I can hear him shouting and smashing stuff and screaming. She kept saying, stop, get off me and all this stuff. And then I had smashed, like, so much been smashed in the house. So she's going quiet, I'm getting worried. Right. 30 miles away in Scunthorpe, multiple police units have been called to a serious domestic incident. Is she answering the door? All right. Come to the door. A lot of the things that we get in here are certainly related around the domestic violence area. What's happening? Yeah. All right, and well, we had a little, a little um... Argument. People have been through an awful lot in the last two years. Um, people have been locked up with with each other. They've become tired of each other. You know, certain things occur. Who's upstairs? Is there anyone else up here? Charlotte. So there's been an argument. Have you got any injuries at all? Has he hit you? Charlotte. Has he hit you? Because it only gets worse once he's laid his hands on you. It never, it never fixes itself. My name is Joe. My sobriety date is February. Having made an arrest for actual bodily harm, officers drive 40 minutes from Scunthorpe to Birchin Way custody suite. As far as domestic violence goes, um, we do see quite a lot of men for abusing their, their partners. Oh, how are we? But we still do get an awful lot of women through the custody suite for domestic related violence. You've been here before? Oh, wait a minute. Really? Hold on, how the tables have turned. <laughs> how much have you been arrested for? DA, AVH. So it's an allegation of a domestic related assault, yeah? Okay. During a verbal argument, this female has punched, scratched and bitten her boyfriend to the forearm, causing a large bruise and broken skin. Tell us what's happened. She's possibly lost it. Right, okay. She started kind of screaming in my face. Right. But then she literally come in, she kind of kicks me in and then Obviously, she tries to. He gotta be mad at her. Must have been me up in that. She chomped it on my arm. That's quite a nasty bite mark on your arm. No, we had like a scrapple. I loved him because he was. Okay, at least she ain't trying to flip it and get him locked up. She took her ill. Restraining me, and I don't like getting restrained. I just lost control. Okay, I am arresting you for. Um, ABH. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shouldn't have bit him. I'll do it as loose as I can for you. Okay? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. We used to have what we call discretion. They, they need to go here, break up. Look at the door. Yeah, we, we really don't have discretion anymore. Even a push now is classed as a common assault, as it should be. Uh, and a lot of people are brought in for things that we never used to bring them in for. Based upon the circumstances that obviously they've given me, um, we do need to have a chat with you. So for that reason, I am going to authorise your detention here at the police station. 
You yeah, go both ways, domestic violence. That's a tough pill to swallow for some of y'all, ain't it? They go both ways. You know what I'm saying? This ain't the streets. Hey, fellas, call the police. <laughs> ah, she put her hands on you. It is not snitching. Call the police. You ain't finna beat me. No, no. You not finna double standard me. No. Hello? Hello? I'm scared. She's really aggressive. She's beating me. She just got her acrylics done. The, she got her filly in. And she got the nails that are shaped like coffins. And she's digging them in my face. <laughs> Simple for me. That's not funny, but hey. Stop. Do you want more plastic bag, please? Your cup of tea. I haven't put any milk in it because of your ulcer. Is that all right? Looking after the detainees is the custody team's number one priority. By all means, if, she's, if you're happy that she's behaving, then. Right now, the team are concerned for the welfare of Charlotte. Take this one off there. All right. Arrested for a domestic actual bodily harm. When people come in, what they've been arrested for doesn't always tell the biggest, bigger picture of what's she going on. She looks like she cleaned up nice, though, Charlotte. There's something about her that make dudes stay. <laughs> behind that arrest. Sometimes things are, are just more complicated than what's presented at face value. OK, have you ever tried to harm yourself? I can just tell by the smile. Hey, I'll I'll smile. Like you all right? We're not just we're not just here to apportion blame to you. As I said, I will look after you. That's what we're here for. But for us to look after you, we just need to look after you properly. Yeah? I've got people here, and they basically work alongside people to try and give you some help if you need any help in anything. Do you want to speak to them? Might do you some good. Yeah? All right. Whilst her case is investigated, Charlotte will be referred to the in-house mental health team. How are you feeling? I'm just taking every day. Like, every day as it comes? Yeah. It's clear that, you know, she's, she's beginning to suffer from what's going on in her, in her life. For me, it's all about making sure she gets the proper help. So the gentleman who does that sort of thing and works alongside us will be told about her to help her get through. And what is quite obviously a difficult time yeah, that's a loop. for her. Her to help her get through and um, what is quite obviously a difficult time for her. That's salutable behaviour. Bless her. Poor thing. If somebody closes it though and you just feel you need it open, just... Bless her, poor thing, but she still put her hands on a man, uh, her significant other. We need to figure that out. I understand there's stuff going on in their life, but I ain't never ever in my life seen a man get put in handcuffs after whooping this girl and get offered a psychology class. No offense, like nobody should be putting nobody their, their hands on nobody. But I ain't never seen the roles reversed and this heck go like this. Buzz them, all right. Or heard of. Yeah? Hey, stop training people in person. To... Bro, shut up, oh my God. COVID is over. Go to the gym and get a trainer in person. Don't listen to dude ball head, <laughs> ball head self. Whilst Charlotte settles into her room, other cells across the custody suite are emptied. Just get a rubbish bag. As detainees are released or taken no, to court. Tony. What's he left for us? Leaving cells that must be prepared for new arrivals. Get rid of this. I don't know what that is the remains of. Dirty bedding. This actually isn't too bad. A couple of hours and there'll be somebody else in this room. It's a bit like one of your busiest hotels, really. It's not meant to be five star, but the custody suite's 36 cells do come with the latest facilities and services. We have a nice en suite. I've stayed in some hotels that don't even have en suites. Running water, we provide maid service, on demand room service, all the meals you want on tap, newspapers, reading material. Just press a button and you're straight through to the receptionist. Oh, yes. 
And just like a busy hotel, there are always problems with noisy guests. If you're in one of these rooms and you've got somebody next door while well, you're not getting any sleep, it's worse than being in a hotel room in Magaluf. Where? If I went into a hotel and it had a mattress like that, I think I would be leaving, running for the door. Custard is one tog do. Is it raining? Do they? <laughs> I prefer feather pillars, especially seeing as we don't provide pillar cases. <laughs> if, if you look at things on a whole, uh, it's not the best of hotels, really, is it? I don't think I'd be wanting to stay here, definitely not. Uh, I haven't got a TV for a start off. The custody suites may be short on luxury. Yeah, but like I said, man, when I was in that thing, they gave me bologna sandwiches. This is a five-star resort. They almost got a pool and a water slide out back if you really want to get into it. Guys, can you come to desk number two for me, please? It's like a post office, isn't it? Desk number two, please. But for some, they're very much an upgrade on what they're used to. Now then, you're right. Okie dokie. So, what have you been arrested for? Uh, shop theft. A £140 shop theft from Aldi. Right, OK. He's trying to eat. You're right. Yeah. So, young man, where are you living at the moment? Mate, yeah, so... Are you sofa yeah, surfing? Sofa right, OK. All right, mate. You've been in custody before? I have been. OK, mate. Hopefully we'll find you then, eh? You've been here before, you've been... 73 times. 73. As a regular visitor to custody, the man is what's known to the team as a frequent flyer. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. If you don't mind. Are you pinching to support something? Is it drugs or is it just food or is it? It's living. Is it or just living? Yeah. Because you're quite prevalent at it, aren't you? Which means that you're obviously doing it for a reason, and that's that's why I'm asking you, mate. That's all. Take them cuffs off. Thank you. They have nowhere else to be, nowhere else to go, um, and they need somewhere to stay. And unfortunately, to get that bed for the night, they go out and commit crime. Very minor crime, probably a shop theft or a, or a small criminal damage, but something that they know will get them here. Uh, and get them a bed for the night, something to eat, something to drink. I know you've been sofa surfing. When was the last time you had shower and clean stuff? Uh, yeah. oh, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, they got good showers, good draws. I seen it last episode. They got good draws, brand new, hangs. You might could get you a polo joint. Um, I know they got the great jumpsuits. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they can do with your shoes, but uh, I seen... Episode one, they got it back there for you. So what we'll do, we'll get you sorted, get you something to eat and drink. Once you're settled, we'll get you a shower. Yeah, get you cleaned up. Yeah, it's all right? Thank you. All right, mate. OK, you want to pop this gentleman to number 33 for me, which is on the orange block. Yep. Uh, and I'll get one of my gang to come round, get you something to eat, something to drink, mate. All right? Whatever you, whatever you need, we'll sort for you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, matey. Yeah. There's a reason why he's homeless and why he's sofa surfing. But, you know, it's about working with them, trying to make sure that they get what you can give them. This dude's actually kind of nice, man. He kind of kind. A good heart, man. When you saw the look on his face when I said I'd get him something to eat, something to drink, you know, get him cleaned up, get him some fresh clothes. It's stuff that they're just not used to. They're not used to people being like that with them. With so many detainees having issues from homelessness to drug dependency, it's important that the staff have specialist training to deal with them. Something Sue uses on every shift. 24 hours a day in Christie, you have to engage in the detainees that you've got here. You have to talk to them, make sure they're OK, you have to look after them. Are you upset more so because you're stuck in here or because of something going on at home? I'm not doing anything wrong. The detainees, they can become quite emotional and stressed and distraught. Have you got any mental health issues? I'll go in and I'll say, are you all right? Right, listen, we've got an issue. The issue is you spoke to the sergeants and said that you're not feeling too good and that you, you, you sort of self-harm sometimes. Is that right? Yeah. But caring for the welfare of so many detainees can also have an impact on the custody team. That's a fact. Some people that come in can have such sad lives. You got to understand, man, some of that stuff, like this is transferable energy. And jobs like this, that energy will transfer to you. You got to make sure you in order and what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? Your procedures are good when you get up out of here. 
You know what I'm saying? All that all that poverty, all that mental illness, all that sadness, depression, anger, that transfers. <laughs> Make sure you straight me when you leave up out of here. Say a prayer, do something, whatever you need to do. It can drag you down sometimes when you're only ever seeing the uh, other side of the spectrum of life. The wheels are already falling off the bus, I think. So I've got a real good hobby, scuba diving. When I go diving um, and I'm under the water and I'm in this different realm, so is my headspace. It's a completely different world. Yeah, I've lions aggressive. some amazing things. And that hobby has took me all over the world. Australia, New Zealand, you know, the underwater experiences, it's like an escapism from reality. Um, and then you walk into work in the morning, you open the door, and you open the door into the custody suite, and bang, there's reality for you. Yeah, straight back down to earth. You come with me, and I'll get you sorted. Sue is looking after the homeless detainee. Are you hungry? Oh, I'm starving. Where did you have seat? About two days ago. I thought so. Dang. We do have a lot of homelessness in Grimsby. They're a human being at the end of the day, just like me. Any of us could end up where, where the homeless... Hey, one day I was in Chicago. I was, like, around the corner from work, and I went to go in Subway, and I, there was a homeless dude. The lady kicked him out, and I was like, are you kicking him out? She was like, she was begging, blah, blah, blah. I was like, nah, I'm going to pay for him. And I went and got this dude. And bro was ordering food, or he was about to order food. And I guess the subway worker was looking at him funny. He was like, man, never mind. I don't even want it. She looking at me funny, man. Thank you. No, 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 no. I'm like, bro. In my mind, I was like, you haven't probably ate for days. And you worried about how she's looking for you? You got to remember, these people still got pride. They still, you know, humility and all, all this stuff going on as humans. But, like. I don't care who's looking at me, what kind of way. If I'm offering some free food, Subway especially, because Subway be having some good stuff, taking it. Was <laughs> are any of us through any different circumstance? Can you stand here? There are new trainers out there. Yeah. You had to bloody run fast in them then, weren't they? <laughs> no. Got you though, didn't they? They caught you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a little autograph on there for me. Okay, great. Sleep the job, tied up. When we get him coming in here, uh, we basically just get him processed, feed him up, get He's some fresh. meat back on his skinny bones. Then he'll basically get his head down and go to sleep. He's never a problem at all. Right, I'm going to go get you something, something to eat. Did you get a couple of things for you? Is that all right? I'll yeah. tell you that. Yeah, I'll have a look for you. Three, four years ago, when my marriage split, I uh, lost my job through uh, uh, a through the drink, um, ended up on severe depression and anxiety. I never imagined that uh, it, it would come to the, with my, uh, my life would end, end up like this. I'd like things to be different if, if, if they could, you know. YouTube Premium is ad-free YouTube and the YouTube Music app. You never know these dudes' stories walking around and asking for change. That's tough. I'll get my sausage in match. I'll get them all digressed. Right, I'll get you breakfast. Sometimes I'll go home at night and I'll sit down with a glass of wine and I'll think to myself, God, how lucky am I? You know, what I've got in my life, how lucky am I? They're looking after me pretty good. To be fair, but I'm polite. You'll be coming here with a bad attitude and you're slamming your door and shouting at the officers. It doesn't really get you very far. So even Thanks. though it's I just not said the that best earlier. situation to be in, you find nice people in, in every situation. So every kind of cloud has a silver lining. There's always a, a nice person to help. There's a lot of people that get banged up on purpose. Like locked up on purpose just to go to the county to get a you know hot meal, shower, sleep for a couple of days, and you know what I'm saying they do that on purpose. Small, steal something small. But you know, over a hundred dollars, you in there? I've got you three. I know, I'm really, really, really cheap. That's all. What about you? All right. 
Oh. We do have empathy for some people that come in custody. Of course you do, yeah. The odd one now and again, you, you can, it quite takes you back and you have to emotionally cut yourself off from it sometimes. By the end of another day in custody, the detainees have had time to consider why they've been locked up. Like Charlotte, the occupant of cell one arrested for assaulting her boyfriend. What I've been through today, a lot of thoughts about life. So I've been reflecting, I've done a lot of reflecting on my life in here for things I've gone through and how I can change them things. Um, really at the moment I'm going through a hard time and sort of it's linked to what's happened today. When I get home there's a lot of making up to do uh, between my partner um, and I've reflected on that I get to share that with you. Y'all gonna stay together? You sure about that? Um, and, you know, hopefully we can work away around things. I definitely won't be coming back again, hopefully. Hey, brother. Uh, she sound good on camera, but that woman already put her hands on you, and that goes vice versa. If a man put his hands on you, it's very hard for them to stop. We're here to make sure that when people leave the custody suite, they don't leave feeling the same way they arrived. They leave feeling more positive. because that's what life's all about. Tony was convicted of theft, burglary, public order offenses, and sentenced to two years, and Tony did all that? Tony lost the fight and got two years in prison. That's tough. The two men arrested with Tony were released without charge. Tony should have been quiet. They processed him, they got him for everything. Craig was cautioned for criminal damage, of course, in order to pay for the shot's broken window, for sure. After the hospital unconscious man was returned to custody, he was convicted of obstruction of an officer. The homeless man was charged with shop theft. His conviction was served through time spent in custody. Okay. Let me know y'all thoughts if anything that happened in that episode, man. I'm gone. TLO, leave a like, comment.